In the news this week, can an online test prove that you have racial preferences? Australians have their say on the verdict. And the Turnbull government gave the green light to construct row 8 despite calls to rethink the link. This is the Evening News with Ivan Love and Daniel Stanislaw. Good evening. A research project conducted by Harvard University can reveal whether you have a racial preference for one race or the other. However, Australians remained sceptical towards the credibility of the results. Everyday racism is a big issue in society today, including Australia, according to racism tests. Project Implicit provides a number of tests, including a racial preference test for people with darker skin and lighter skin. Refugees Rights Action Network spokesperson said tests like Project Implicit were great examples of studies that reinforce research on racism that had been done before. I think that it's possible for people to have those underlying tendencies and to make a decision and a choice to move through them and pass them. According to Altogether Now, one in five people who live in Australia was a target of racial discrimination. Sean Gorman from Curtin University said he could not judge racism based on the lack of knowledge of the test. However, felt racism was becoming more of an issue with extremists and asylum events happening. The issues around racism and the tensions that those sorts of things cause, whether it's within football clubs or whether it's in the, on the street or whether it's um, more broadly at rallies as we've seen of late, like with Reclaim Australia and these sorts of things, um, that racism seems to be still a, a, an issue. Fellow young people also felt racism is a big issue, but a test may not be the most accurate method. Well, I don't think so because people can lie. People can manipulate the answers when they have cameras or when they have uh, mics in front of them. Cecilia Faustina, WAMN News. Concerned citizens and MPs are fighting to stop the $1.6 billion Perth Freight Link after it was approved by the Turnbull government. While anti freight supporters were asking the government to rethink the link, the Melville Mayor called the effort a waste of time. Communities, families and MPs came together to protest the creation of the Perth Freight Link project after federal government announced the approval of row 8. The row 8 component is the beginning of a road, we don't know where it's going to finish and it's hugely expensive. Communities and citizens were hopeful for the government to rethink an alternative system rather than the planned road extension, which, it's been said, would destroy the wetlands and evacuate homes within Stock Road. We're still calling on the Prime Minister, our four mayors, to meet with us and to consider stepping back from this whole process. Melville Mayor Russell Aubrey, however, was happy of Row 8's approval and was not concerned about its progress. Oh, well, it doesn't concern me about people's uh, threats. Uh, the uh, parliamentary inquiry was just a waste of time. Meanwhile, the Transport Minister said the government has done enormous amount of work to secure the wetlands. We've been responsible in ensuring that we protect nature by uh, making sure that the offset that we set up is far greater than the impact we'll be having on the environment. Construction of World 8 is planned to begin next year. Helene Fong, WAMN News. WA's peak union body is fighting state government's plans to cut safety jobs from WorkSafe. Nelson Liu has this report from Parliament House. Unions WA are calling on the state government to restore 10 safety inspector positions as part of planned cuts to WorkSafe. Unions WA presented a petition to Parliament as part of the Save Our Services campaign involving agriculture, transport and resources sectors. The cuts are designed to save $4.1 million in this year's state budget. We've seen cuts to health, we've seen cuts to education. Now we're seeing cuts uh, in the area of workplace safety that means that Western Australian workplaces will be less, not more safe. Parents expressed their outrage against the state government's plan to remove nine transportable classrooms from two local primary schools in Woodbridge. They are concerned as the school is already struggling to cope with a high number of students. The opposition also joined the rally. There's already limited play space here at Woodbridge Primary School. If you just put more demountables here, the play space is going to be really limited. They're going to be like sardines and you have to worry about the physical and the psychological effects that it's going to have on them. The United Nations has turned 70 years old and has marked the occasion with a celebration. Perth's government house opened its doors for a multicultural event to celebrate the milestone, with fun and festivities to promote its key message to build a better world. The United Nations was first founded on October 24, 1945. At least for UNAA, our job is to educate and advocate all the ideals and goals of UN 
for example, um, peace and security, more sustainable environment for all to live in, um, and also human rights. US presidential candidate Hillary Clinton completed her marathon testimony, which lasted for 11 hours. In a packed hearing room, Ms Clinton has defended the government's action on Benghazi as the committee investigates the attack of the US embassy in Libya back in 2012. She also accused the Republicans' front-runner of misleading the public. I took responsibility. And as part of that, before I left office, I launched reforms to better protect our people in the field and help reduce the chance of another tragedy happening in the future. And on News Night this week with Blake Daniels, Ark, vaccine expert Julie Lisk discussed the government's no job, no pay policy. You can find a podcast online and listen to the show every Thursday from 5 p.m. on Yes FM. And those are the stories you need to know this week. We have the latest news on the website. Thanks for your company. Until we see you again next Sunday, good night. Good night.